Okay, I've redone my test. Um, I'm pretty good at making unbelievable claims. And uh, last time it said uh, 0.15 in, 0.76 out of watts. And I can't repeat that test which was 82.7, it was 3, I measured this again, it's 82.7 ohms on this resistor and 374 ohms on this resistor, it used to be 378, I just checked my uh, voltmeter down here is on the blink. I'm using this one here. So across 82.7 is 3.7 volts. And I have this in volts AC. Okay, now I'll go over here and put the volts on the other resistor. I have a resistor on each secondary. I don't have them in parallel or series. I have two, two outputs. Each secondary has its own resistor and so it has its own power output. And so on this one we have 16.8 volts. And if you do the math on that, it comes to this right here, 100, so you do 3.7 for watts on the resistor to the left, and you do 16.8 times 16.8 by 374 and you come up with 166 and 7.754.920 watts output and what I've done different than that test the last video I did with the test with 0.15 in 0.76 out is I put an 8 UF cap in series going to the primary and this boosts the power output up from 0.7 to 0.9 average and it also makes uh, a little bit more output in amps and uh, voltage at 21 is the voltage going in. 20, so I have 21.1 voltage coming from the variac. Okay. So I think where the other test was wrong is one of these was disconnected of something. So I had very low amps. See, now look at the amps now. Not even, not even one square division. And now I put this on. And this is the amps. The amps is in the middle there. This one. So I have a uh, SA stands for spaces in amps, 6.5 spaces. And the spaces for volts is 15 now. So if you look at this closely, it's like 15 for the voltage, the higher one, and for the amps, it's the lower one. And here's the phase shift right there. 
which I got as one space and 10 spaces is one 360 degree cycle so every space is worth 36 degrees so the cosine of 36 degrees is 8 point 0.8 point 0.8 so anyway so the the input now looking with a scope is 0 0.045 times 21 times 0 0.8 0 0.75 watts not point 0.15 like I had before Sorry about that. So the over unity is not such a big deal here. It's 0.75 in, 0.92 out. But it's something. When I did, uh, When I did this test with no cap in series, no cap in series, now instead of uh, so no cap in series, it's twelve volts out. 0.042 well with the 8 UF cap talking about in I'm sorry 12 spaces so when you calculate it out knowing each space is 0.002 It comes to 17.6, which doesn't uh, line up with what the uh, variax has coming out with a meter. That says 21 volts, 21.1. But the amps does increase when you put that 8 UF cap in series point, from 0 0.042 to 0.045. And the voltage increases from 17.6 to 21. And now it lines up with the meter over the variac, too. So I also tried a 20 UF cap across. A 20 UF cap in series going to the primary. And this is this is my first test to repeat everything. And that twenty UF cap was too much and it really uh made the amps go way up. So there's 11.5 spaces for amps. And instead of 0.05 or 0.04, I mean 0.045 or 0.042 for amps, it's all the way up to 0.08 with a 20 UF cap. So it raises the draw almost almost doubles the draw when you put a 20 UF cap in series. So that's not a good idea. And now you don't have over unity, you have like 0.16 watts out. Because you didn't get that much more, you got 17.3 times 17.3 across the resistor and then you have 3.8 that's supposed to be there.
Yeah. And this is 17.3. So it does make more power out. 3.8 times 3.8 instead of 3.2 times 3.2, you know, squaring the voltage across the resistor. And it, and this is with no cap at all right here. See what you get? 3.2 times 3.2, 14.9 times 14.9 with no cap in series. What did I just say? This is, you know, this is the one resistor on one secondary, one resistor on the other. Here's the voltage you get across it. You square it to figure out the amps, okay? And so that's with no cap with 20 UF. See, it goes up from 17 to, from 14.9 to 17. So you have more power out. And it goes 3.2, goes up to 3.8. But... You have 11.5 spaces on the scope, which comes to 0 0.08 amps when you do the math to figure it. So it's just not good to use the 20 UF. So the uh, Watts with no cap at all is 0.59 in. And here we have, uh, it says it's only 16.9 on the scope, while the meter on the uh, variac says 21. But that's what it says, so I put it in the, this is all scope. And then there's the power factor, 0.8. It's a 36 degree phase angle. And so it comes to 0.59 in and 0.719 out. This is with no cap. Sorry if this is boring, but. And now with the 8 UF cap. The amps goes up on the input, not so much, not all the way to 0.08, it goes up to 0.045, which is not much increase in amperage on the input, and the 21 volts lines up with what the variac says across the, what the meter says across the variac, and then it's the phase angle stayed the same. So that's where you get the 0.75 watts input with an 8 UF cap. With no cap, you have 0.59 watts input. So that's the increase in draw when you use an 8 UF cap. But you get nice out lot nicer output at 3.7 instead of 3.3 with no cap across the 82.3 ohm resistor and you get 16.8 volts across the 374 ohm resistor although it says 378 doesn't matter much so it's uh, compared to 14.9. So it went up 16.8 across the resistor from 14.9 without a cap. Okay. So there's dose of reality now. Here's what the scope shows. This is with the 8 UF cap. And let's put the amps, I like to go, put it right up here, right on that. 
centered on that top line and it looks like 6.5 spaces. Not 7, not 6, right in between. So I say 6.5 spaces and it's in the 0.01 setting so every space is 0 0.002 volts and you so you times 6.5 times 0 0.002 it gives you something and then you times that by 0 0.707 and then I have a 0 0.1 shunt 0.1 resistor is the shunt and then so it comes to 0 0.045 this represents 0 0.045 amps coming in and the voltage now if you look at my last video which I'm probably going to take down soon the amps did not look like this what they looked like was like if this was disconnected they looked like that, like it's only going into one of these resistors, only half the power was coming out. Because when you hook up the res resistor, looks like this. I'm going to guess that's what happened. And I remember it lurching up. It was like this, and then it lurched up, and I jiggled this wire up here, and it went down to here. So I thought it was a poor connection, and that lines up with what the meter says. If I have an amp meter coming out from the variac to the primary, so because it lined up with the uh, amp meter, I thought, okay, that must be okay. But I think this is, I think there was something going on with one of these not hooked up. That's all I could figure out why it was so low of amps input. Now, I did some tests last night. Uh, Uh, measuring the amperage going in to a uh, resistor. I think I was using a different resistor, but I wanted to uh, correlate, see how bad this amp meter is, because I noticed uh, when it says 0 0.02 input, and you think you have really low input with the amp meter, if you use the scope and you check what the amps is, it's really twice that. And so, uh, I think this meter cannot, uh, at low, like 20 milliamps, 10 milliamps, it doesn't give a good reading. Anyways, what uh, the scope says, going into a resistor from one of the secondaries, or I think it was both of the secondaries I had, in parallel so yeah it was both secondaries in parallel and I was checking what the meter says going in and what that scope says the scope said that it was 230 milliamps while the meter said it was only 90 milliamps so there's another example of the meter shows about half the uh, amperage than it really is, so it fools you. So forget about these amp meters measuring these low currents and the higher currents too. So there's that. I think also oh, um, I checked the shunt bar windings and I got nothing coming out of them, just minuscule.
power. I think I have them too thick. I think I'm going to make them only about half the thickness because the back EMF comes in this way and the back EMF comes in this way and the coil gets it like from both ends at the same time and it just sweats this and it doesn't make any power. But if you have it way over on the side, it'll shoot by and go by and it'll kind of establish a north and a south on the coil and you'll make some power. It won't be canceling. But I made another one of these out of some laminates from an old transformer and I was getting a lot of amps out of these in that one. So something's wrong here. So probably going to redo the shunt bar windings. It's supposed to be one-third, one-third, one-third. And it looks like it's not one-third, one-third, one-third. Although the windings stop about here. here. So anyways, if I could get like a couple watts or a watt out of these, it would be great. Half a watt. So, at least at what power levels I'm doing now, I could get a half watt out of these shunt bar windings. Um, it would really give some over unity. What else? I guess that's about it. So I'm correcting my last video. And thanks for watching.